good evening. I'd like to open a public meeting of the Planning Board for tonight, September the 24th, 2015. Um, we always start with an offer for public comment for anything that is not on the agenda for the night. Seeing none, we'll move into the first agenda item. Um, at 7 o'clock, we'd uh, uh, have a... Uh, Open the agenda for uh, administrative amendment to the exterior of elevations at 225 King Street. Um, <coughs> I don't need to explain the public comment period because I don't think there is any. So this isn't technically a public hearing. So there's always a gray area for site plans. When something changes a, a very small amount, then staff can just approve them. When it's a little bit more, it ha it, we come to the board for sort of administrative action. And if you think it's too much, we'd ask them to come back for for a special permit amendment or site plan. Ah, so a review, as it were. Right. So from staff standpoint, it's fine for you guys to approve this as a field change, but you have to decide that. So both procedurally, you're comfortable approving a change of this magnitude. If you are, aren't, I mean, if you are, you know. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Wayne. Do I still need to disclose since it's just an administrative amendment? I should I think disclose. It's my, just even though the, there's nobody here to object, I have worked. And I am currently working with the presenter, uh, Berkshire Design. Uh, I don't think it's going to affect my ability to be objective, but just want to make it known. And not with the applicant, only with the, their consultant. The presenter, right, not the applicant, right, okay. correct. So um, we take up the uh, administrative amendment request. Is there a presentation or a conversation? Sure. Um, I got Mark Darnold from Berkshire Design, and I think you have a packet in front of you. Which, uh, much has everything we're talking about, but currently, uh, this is <coughs> Carolyn was talking about me. I was still calling to Taco Bell, <laughs> <laughs> the King Street Eats. Um, and basically, we're going to do very minor adjustments to the site plan itself. Uh, first of all, it's going to be converted into uh, UMass Five College credit unit. That's the proposed uh, use of the building uh, from a site perspective. This is the existing condition, but you see the green is the green area, how much grass is on the area. And what we're proposing to do is essentially widen some of the areas, uh, increase the amount of grass, do some landscaping around the front. Currently, there's some um, brick chips and picnic tables. Um, take one of these parking spaces in the front and give us more um, landscape areas around the building, best set up from a site perspective. We will be losing a couple of the parking spaces, but by Current zoning, I think we're going to require to have six. We have many, much more than that. Actually, as a part of the original agreement, several of the parking spaces at the Pottery <coughs> Mall are dedicated to this lot as well. So we have more than that for parking. We're decreasing <coughs> the amount of pavement, increasing the amount of grass, and uh, you know, so there will be no net increase in runoff. Traffic patterns remain the same. It will have a drive-up window, same location. From, uh, again, this is the Obviously, existing in Spring King Street Beats, vertical you know, aerial, and uh, road view. From an architectural perspective, uh, Jerry Ferris from Element uh, Architect is here if you want to go into some more detail about the building. But from the front of the building, um, they will be raised up to be in compliance with uh, current zoning, which requires a minimum of a 20 foot height for the building. We're over 20, 21.1 feet, or 21 feet and 1 inches high. Uh, essentially the front of the building, this is the uh, south elevation, King Street being on here. That <coughs> portion of the building will be raised up to give it the higher architectural element. The rear portion of the building is going to remain, the internal, external walls anyway, will remain the same. So it will be the same footprint as we have today, just making some very drastic and I think very drastic improvements to the front of the building and its three uh, views. Trying to keep this short and sweet, but again, architecturally improved. There'll be a drive-up window. We're proposing to have a bike rack here next to the building. Um, some architectural elements you have in your package. <coughs> Trying to keep this short and sweet. Um, I don't know if there's any specific questions. Again, the architect is here if you have any questions regarding the building itself. Thank you. And other questions? So, are you going to demo the building? No. Uh, the, the front walls uh, will be taken down to make room for this glass. The rear three quarters of the building, the external walls will be will be retained. And the inter interior portion of the building will obviously be 
revamp from a kitchen to an office scenario. But uh, the, the rear third of the build, or three wall, will uh, be retained. Uh, they'll be improved on the outside with some cladding. But they'll be taken down to the framing. I, mean, I think there's stucco on there or dry yeah. it or something. So it's all got to come down to the framing and uh, that part will be retained. And then there's a parapet wall there that has all the rooftop equipment and stuff which will stay. It's about a three foot parapet wall there currently. Yeah. My name is Jeffrey Ferris from Element. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, so uh, the, the intent was really to, uh, as Mark said, keeping the footprint of the building uh, as it is uh, and then using as much of the structure as we can. The front part, obviously, um, you know, there's limitations to what is there in that building right now. So uh, we, we, we client wanted to create kind of a focal point, uh, put the lobby at the front of the branch, so the glass there. Uh, and then, uh, as Mark alluded to, uh, the roof line was modified to try and hit the, the 20 foot minimum height. Um, yes, Carla. And maybe this questions for Wayne. Um, so it looks like the city sidewalks and the uh, handicap access is all for uh, city standards currently. Um, what these days we require wider sidewalks and wider tree belts, mm -hmm. but given this is an existing use, okay. it's a permit. It, it, mm -hmm. that, okay. So yeah, if this, if this was a virgin site, mm -hmm. we wouldn't allow two entrances. We prefer the entrance just to be internal. We require the side further back with sort of a double tree belt, mm -hmm. tree belt, sidewalk, tree belt. Okay. But again, because they're grandfathered, so okay. right. Gotcha. Just and then, um, is there any uh, any information on site lighting? Uh, we're proposing to retain the same site lighting, post location, but new fixtures. New fixtures. New fixtures. Yeah. fixtures. Mm -hmm. All LED cutoff type fixtures. Dark so, sky. Okay. Yes. Do you have a plan on the time for those? Time plan. I mean, how long they're going to be on and off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hoping the lights are the, the light. Would you have an automatic cutoff on the lights? All the light fixtures would have cutoffs to, to keep the uh, illumination on the property. But at the uh, drive up area where there is an ATM, um, there would be lights on all the time. It just because the, there, there are standards that need to be followed for that for obvious safety reasons. So that area would have. Uh, the lights on 24 hours, or, or during the night. We use the staff level, staff level. We will need photometrics for the lights, and need to approve that to make sure it meets. Pardon the me. Okay. We, we need photometrics, and we need to approve the light levels for those things. But Carolyn can do it at the staff level. That's okay, that's fine. We can do that. So I appreciate your candor of saying the roof was designed to just barely meet the minimum. But we were um, honest. Yep, you are. <laughs> um, Wayne, is there any thinking about the fact that I'm sure when we originally set that we meant the facade of the building meeting that? So this the curved roof give you any heartburn? No, it's, I mean, again, because it's so much better than what's there now, and that's sort of the standard. Yeah, right I think now. it looks great. Yeah. <clears throat> Wayne, is there, because it's an existing building, is there any latitude as far as, um, they've got bike racks and so forth, but the things we usually look at, bike racks, snow removal, plantings, you know, sidewalks, all those things, are those open for debate or not really? I, yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. It's legitimate. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, usually we say, as long as you're making it better, we're happy. But, you know, I mean, you're proving it as an administrative piece because you have some <coughs> discretion in doing it, so. Yeah. What's being applied for? This is... Well, that's that's. What's a, the application? Oh, yeah. The well, we don't really have one. We're trying to find out yeah. if there's any issues that we need there's to apply for. I think we're just m slightly modifying the existing um, site plan. It's right. Really, there was it really qualifies. So once you're in the site plan system, you're sort of the site plan system forever. So Kings Eats, whatever it's called, came in a dozen years ago. I don't know when that was, mm -hmm. and so there was a site plan approval from this board. So you're you're in essence saying. You know, I mean, typically someone modifies the site plan during construction, but once the site plan's approved, that site plan remains in effect forever. Mm -hmm. And so you're being asked to amend that site plan from a dozen years ago, and the question is, is it big enough and needs a formal public hearing, or is it a small enough change, it's in essence a field change? So I, I was confused by what you said initially. Is this a hearing or not? 
This is not a hearing. It's not a hearing. Are you comfortable doing this? As yeah, I formal? confuse that by myself saying a hearing, but we're not opening hearing. Is it, is it the dollar amount that triggers? See, the, unfortunately, this may be something we should think about someday, but we don't, <clears throat> we don't really have a set standard. I mean, I have never in all my years doing this seen a project that's built exactly according to the site plan. They're, they're always subtle. You know, oh, we discovered a gas line, we have to move the tree five feet. We're moving the building six inches. And so there's always been this sort of issue of what is staff comfortable doing without even coming back to you guys, and what are you comfortable about doing with formal public hearing? And, and we've tended to do, if there's a change, no matter how small, that makes things worse. So it's not a threshold size, it's that it makes things worse at some level. That's when we've tended to say, you better come back. Because the public isn't getting a chance to, to comment on this, and anything gets worse, we should be looking at. But in this case, with less traffic, less pavement, less drainage, less ugliness, <laughs> Sta that's the reason staff is comfortable, because we couldn't find anything that made it worse. There are things, and this goes back to what Mark was asking, there are things, if this is a brand new site, we would certainly be asking for there are more, and traffic circulation, narrowing the curb, cutting King Street's the biggest one. But it's hard to argue that this, I, I don't know the numbers, but I'm sure this bank will have a small fraction of what a, a drive-in restaurant had. I mean, banks, right. banks are high traffic users, it's not like you wouldn't have traffic. But just compared to what was there, are they, are they they have a drive-through already at Potpourri. Will that be is that going away? Down? Is that going yes. away? Yes, yeah. for them it is. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> but they're going to maintain an office still in Potpourri at all or not? Or do you know? I'm just curious. But this branch is what that will replace this it. branch. Wow, that's pretty. That's yeah, new too. I mean, <clears throat> I, I think this. I agree with everything Wayne said, and this is 100 percent better than what's there. It's the existing footprint made better, right. but. I guess if we have the opportunity, every chance we've had along King Street to plant a tree when we could, we've done that. You know, from Taco Bell to the Leah Honda, everywhere <laughs> up and down the street. And it's made a difference, you know, at least from the Willard concrete down, you're, we're starting to get that tree built. And, it's, and so there's not a lot of opportunity in the front facing King Street, but on the left and right side, there might be a spot, it would seem, Mark, I don't know if you agree, where we could plant a tree or two, maybe on the left and right side. Um, Otherwise, I mean, from traffic flow to the elevations, I, 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 I have no issue with it at all. I, yeah. I, the same thing holds for the sidewalk. I'd love a wider sidewalk, but I don't think we have any leverage right. to get there. Right. Um, there is a tree uh, just to the south. I don't know any, anybody. Yeah, but that's not your tree. Pardon? <laughs> that's not your tree. No. You can't yeah. claim yeah. somebody else's tree. There's room there for a tree. <laughs> Although they did claim brown mulch as green space for the existing build. I thought yeah. that was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm anticipating that uh, UMass Five College will not object to planting a tree as long as it works on the site. Yeah, yeah. I think you've got two opportunities. Both of them are going to be a struggle for the tree, but we'd sure like to try. Yeah. The one on the north uh, west corner, I would want to think about that. That's at the signalized intersection. I don't want to block. That's really close to blocking yeah. the vision at that location. <coughs> so I would like to think about that a little bit before we go too fast there. And maybe confer with DPW before we plant a tree on north northwest corner there. Our new tree warden. Tree warden. Any other comments or questions? Just, just sticking with that, which I agree with in premise, but then I'm trying to think, Wayne, on the... So planting a tree in that northwest corner, that's right near the exit. But thinking uh, at the, you know, the new Greenfield Bank and the LEA dealerships and so forth where we've got that tree belt, do we stop it short of the drive through or does it continue, you know, in a similar case like this where we have a, <coughs> the curb cut, do the trees go up to the curb cut or do we There's pull them some back? There's but you can get pretty close. And, and, and typically we want people to limit up so you can see underneath the, the canopy. Um, so could we, for example, ask for a tree on the, on the north and south and the north end pending DP, DPW approval? Okay. That's fine, yeah. You can't, just so you know, just for background, you can't actually do that as part of a site plan. You're not allowed to give your authority to somebody else. You're allowed to continue a hearing and say you want to hear it. Mm -hmm. This is sort of more informal. Right. I think that's fine. I also think, I expect you can do a tree there exactly where the location is. I think we need their input, but I think it's, I think it'd be safe for you to say, Two trees, one on each side, right. the exact yeah. location to be right. determined. I 
so the reason I think you have leverage, just so you know, is what you'd be saying is if you plant in the tree, you're comfortable doing this as administrator change. <clears throat> If they, if they can't do the tree for some reason, they can apply for a site plan amendment and go through that process. Yes, yes, if they want yes. to not do right. it. Right. Yeah. Right. John? Yeah, and uh, this is for Wayne, just more from an education standpoint. So they're only changing the site plan. The footprint of the building is not changing. Right. But right. if they come, <coughs> it kind of op it opens up the whole, I mean, could we say anything about the building if we wanted to? At this point, I mean, is it kind of like once you open the conversation, then everything's open? And and I apologize, I'm just trying to. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's definitely a weakness in our zoning. We should be working on. We just we don't have a clear standard for when you when you do things. Um, but because you clearly would have the right to say, yeah. no, we want to see it during site plan. That's why it becomes a dialogue going back. I would I would be comfortable if we had something we really didn't like. Than saying that you was that was making the site plan no longer acceptable then we'd have a reason to take them back through the process but because we wanted to punitively get to the building I don't feel like we can right. do that right <laughs> okay right. right and I and I think the building I mean yeah I get the thing about the 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 roof I mean this isn't a this isn't a gable roof I'm not trying to claim it is but just you know the way we do height and a gable roof is we do the midpoint of the gable and I'm not exactly sure 15 to 21 one not not quite but you know okay. Yes. <coughs> so we have expressed our interest on tree, and you will try to accommodate that. Correct. And we won't draw a line in the sand on that. Is everybody comfortable? We won't either. <laughs> um, so do you need a vote from us, or just okay? So um, can I entertain a motion that we uh, uh, allow the administrative amendment to be done by the planning board? So you're looking for a recommendation, Wayne? A formal recommendation? I, I move to recommend. The administrative amendment to exterior elevations at 225 King Street, formerly King Street Eats slash Spoleto Express, with the condition that uh, the photometrics are uh, submitted for administrative review and two trees are installed uh, at along King Street at your discretion. Is that how we're wording that? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate what's it. what's the timeline on this? I think in the spring, probably midwinter, spring, probably yep. start. Yeah. Um, Super. Better that. hurry. We certainly need more banks on. <laughs> 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 All towns say that. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the drugstores. Yeah. Just so you guys know for background, um, so much the, the basic rules for zoning are set out in state law. Site plan is never mentioned in zoning whatsoever, a sort of creation of local governments. And there's been lots of litigation <coughs> on that, and so the courts, in essence, have set what the rules are. But there's no requirement under court rulings to have public hearings at all for site plan. Northampton has written a zoning, and so whatever rules city council rights apply, and so Northampton right requires, site, requires the public hearing. But Northampton could potentially not require a public hearing. And if you remember, we have this very small category of very small permits. The planning staff can approve. We don't have to hold public hearings, so um, so that's why it's sort of this is a gray area. It'd be very different if this was a special permit. Well, and the ones you approve are called administrative. That's exactly right. 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 But gentlemen, like this is, I mean, if something came up that we were unanimously objected to, that it went ugly or it went worse, whatever, we could say no. We like we don't agree with it, and therefore it needs to come back. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. We, we'd be the careful. The here is we get these training examples so rarely. I lose the lesson. Well, that's why it's worth talking about. Yeah, I think it is. Size. Yeah. Um, this is so, also at 7 o'clock, but now at 7.20, I'd like to open the agenda item for... Uh, I will not open it. I'm just going to note the consideration <coughs> of the public hearing on amendment to Northampton Zoning Codes. <coughs> Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're opening that. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing uh, for us to consider uh, both ordinances, the um, suburban residential and the uh, rural residential uh, amendments. Um, and I had last 
meeting propose that we consider those jointly. I would take anyone's advice if you want to consider them separately. Well, I think we've looked at it. Are you uh, going to walk us through, Wayne, any yeah. of the final? Yeah. So the two are, in essence, the same standard, one for, for suburban residential and one for RR. If you remember, and I think most of you have been through this process, we've been making the table, Carolyn has been making the tables a lot more readable, getting rid of silly rules, merging categories together. Um, and so we've been doing that in most, in most of the other zoning districts. And so RR and SR, we just haven't done that yet. So the most important part of this is improving the zoning to make it more readable. Um, in doing that, Carolyn went through and said what no longer makes sense in these process. So I'm just going to walk you through those are. Um, so detached accessory apartment um, is changing um, uh, uh, from needing a special permit to not. Assisted living residents to not being allowed. Um, I, I didn't see detached anywhere in there. Oh, she dropped it? I don't, I don't remember you mentioned it. <coughs> yeah. Okay, I apologize. Is that wrong? It it eliminates nursing care, assisted living, junk cars in suburban residential. It, it does not eliminate community centers, but it does in rural. What does it mean eliminate? I'm not following this. So, so let me go back. Let me let me go through. So let's start with accessory apartment. Accessory apartment right now requires a special permit from zone. We've been moving a few things to things that require a site plan approval, but from staff because they're fairly straightforward. So, so detached accessory apartment would stay in the zoning, still in allowed use, but instead of requiring a special permit from the zoning board, it would only require a site plan approval from the, from planning staff. Um, and the I, John, and is the only distinction that de detached. That's right. So it, if they're attached, they don't need. That's right. If they're oh, attached, right. they're allowed by right. Okay. All right. If they detach, the main thing is really location, lighting, and very technical things. Right. So you see, I'm looking at SR, but the same things for RR. In the table of what's allowed, close to the bottom of the page, actually, the very for, for SR, the very last one, detached accessory dwelling administrative site plan. So it's it's easing the standard for doing. So so the history for site for accessory dwellings, what people often call mother-in-law apartments, is they weren't allowed to about 1985. Then the city allowed them for up to 800 square feet, attached the dwelling with a special permit. We found it worked really well. It was loosening the regulations. We had almost no complaints. And so we changed it to being allowed by right. Um, then it worked well. We changed it to being allowed by 900 square feet. And then it worked well. And we started doing a detached accessory dwelling units, I think carriage places but those required a special permit so this is the next step in what's been a 30-year process of liberalizing you know testing slowly liberalizing seeing what works um, accessory dwelling units are just you know this isn't statistically correct we haven't really researched it but roughly about a third of them are actually being used by mother-in-law you know that kind of th thing about a third are being rental are being rented and about a third which is one thing that really surprised us is being used basically for a guest house you want a place for your company, you don't want to share a kitchen with them, you give them a guest house. Um, How do you know that? Really just from watching as the permits come in, which is why it's not. Well, but on the permit, do people say how they're going to use no, it? No, people tend to tell us. People tend to come in and talk. So to them. just informally by conversation? Right, which is why we only know what happens when somebody first builds. You know, mother-in-law dies. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what happens. We don't try right. it. The only time the conversations are is somebody comes in for doing it. Or in the case of Maple Ridge, the house burns down to the ground with accessory apartments, so we hear from the newspapers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Um, so that one, we're, we're liberalizing. Um, so I'm just going through these big changes. Yep. Assisted living, we're dropping as an allowed use. So the idea is, you know, the assisted living is being built at the state hospital. That's a good, dense place. Nobody objects to 83 units. That may not be an appropriate use in a place with you know, a more rural place. We had a lot of complaints, for example, for Zoe Life Care. We had, as far as I know, no complaints for Christopher Heights, the state hospital. So sort of saying those outlying areas don't necessarily make sense. Um, the one, two, and, oh, and, and so residential incentive overlay. 
This was a concept that was done in 1985, same time we did accessory apartments. The concept was, let's look at the city capacity. Um, and they looked in detail at water and sewer and said, where was the surplus capacity? They identified an area north of Bridge Road, um, uh, west of King Street, and created a rural incentive overlay and said, in this area, you could basically triple the allowable density if you allow affordable housing. Since 1985, we've never had one of these. We had one that was approved, 89 units behind the food co-op, and then they went bankrupt during the recession, and no nothing was ever built. And frankly, water and sewer are not the real constraints. For us, it's traffic is the basic constraints. And most people doing affordable housing are doing what's called a comprehensive permit. So we're trying to take this off the books. It just doesn't make sense. It, you know, people come in, they read it, doesn't, it doesn't apply in most areas. So we're just mm -hmm. saying, let's get rid of rural incentive. Um, to physically get rid of the map, the map, we have to do a map change. And we're not doing that now, so we're changing the text here. We'll eventually come back with a map change. Um, community center. Um, also dropping this. So what community center is, is uh, we have two of them right now. At Look Park, the old, what are they, um, you know, where people get married at Look Park. Mm -hmm. What's that? Not the carriage house. Garden house, thank you. So Garden House, the community center, and the old Florence Grammar School is a community center. Those both make sense. They serve multiple uses. Again, it's not something you necessarily have out in SRRR. The only real exception we've ever thought about and I hesitate to say this because there's no plans for this whatsoever. I don't want to start a rumor. But, you know, four years ago, the discussion about do we close an elementary school? And if so, is it Bridge Street or is it Ryan Road? If that ever happened, that might be a community center. But there's no plans to do that. I don't want to keep selling the books that it covers 1,000 acres of land. So that might happen. So if Ryan Road School ever changed, again, no plans whatsoever, we reopen that conversation rather than sort of remembering it here. Um, Taking it off the allowed use, though, not yet. they could come and ask us to do it. We just have to consider it, right? No, we're taking it off. It would take a zoning change to do it. Right. So how would okay. if Ryan Road wanted to become a community center, but it's not allowed because we took it off the? So we need to rezone at the time, which is easy to do. You know, if the city's going to surplus a building, this means the city council support, so we could rezone right. it. And you only need the community center if you're doing some for-profit uses. So let's say, again, not to start rumors, right. but Amherst is going to close their middle school and they're going to move um, their uh, um, special education services there and recreation. Those are municipal uses which we allow anywhere. So it's only if we closed a school and didn't fill it with nonprofits and public uses. Um, you know, and so who knows what happened. Right. Okay. And in fact, we have something else on the books which we passed, you know, which covers Clark School and other places, which is a former school gets grandfathered for some uses. So probably they could use it under a separate section of zoning anyway. Um, and then junk cars, we just don't think these residential neighborhoods are, are appropriate places for junk cars. <coughs> for junk. Um, are there some places you think are appropriate for junk cars? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I think the industrial district on Route 10 is perfectly appropriate. Um, I mean, I think it should be screening, but I think otherwise that's, that's a good use for doing it. So that's, those are sort of the, the, the use changes. And then the same things that you've already seen for the districts. So the things about um, you know, having a 40-foot tower next to a 10-foot tall building stands out. So the sort of those same design centers you've seen now in four other districts would be copied over. So we'd be relaxing the use standards and the things we get most often, which is accessory apartments. We'd be getting stricter in the use standards for things we don't get that are really controversial, assisted living, junk cars. And we'd be adding these mild design standards. And, and what's the modification on the um, ground mounted PVs? <clears throat> so, um, trying to liberalize the ground mounted PVs. Again, we already allow them on roofs, um, we already allow them on parking lots, saying it's okay up to the commercial scale. And there's a, there's a threshold, I've got what that is. But if you become a real commercial enterprise, we still, we're not changing those rules. And, I, and just to be clear, so you know the controversy, PV is not without controversy. There's one project on Riverside Drive with a wood frame that people yeah. don't like, yeah. but we don't want sort of one bad thing to, to govern what's generally a good use out there. But, but is that a ground-mounted project? I'm not understanding ground-mounted. I think that is, isn't it? 
Yeah, well, it is. I mean, it's, it's twenty yeah, feet in the air, but well, it's ground mounted. I, guess I, wasn't, I guess I was thinking it was not a ground mounted because no, it's that's not. ground mounted. So it's, it's, think of it as ground mounted or rooftop. Okay. So in that sense, it's ground mounted. Got it. Okay. You know, maybe raised, but. Yeah. So Wayne, I'm sorry, but I didn't catch the first part. What What are the modifications for those ground mounted TVs? So we're basically treating them the way we do in other spots in town, um, in, in the other zoning districts. And let me just find that. So this is, um, again, under allowed uses, the administrative site plan. Um, they can be of any size as long as they're over a legal parking lot or driveway. Um, landfill site and airport, although obviously we don't have airports out there. So the, the standards for where they're allowed hasn't changed. It's really going to the administrative site plan. It's it's making that that easier to do. You know that extra, the cost for doing a special permit, the public process, the two months it takes, scares some people away. There's a size limitation. There is right, and that becomes what's commercial. And that's I don't remember. It's in the definitions okay, that hasn't that changed. That hasn't changed, <clears throat> that hasn't changed that right. Size. That's correct. So the project we approved last meeting would not have even come to us. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, eight kilowatts. So for the sake of argument, if I wanted to do an eight kilowatt PV array in my side yard and replicate what was done on Riverside Drive and put it ground mounted but 20 feet in the air, I could do that. So if it's eight kilowatts or above, it's still special permit from the board. Or below, I'm saying below, seven yeah. and a half kilowatts. You still come and talk to staff and right. staff would have to approve it. Right. And so we might look at those kinds of things. You know, yes, because because what what administrative site plan means a practical thing is we have to say yes, we have to approve the use. We're not having a discussion, but we can certainly do design things. We can say no, you can't have plywood, that, you know, on the part that faces the street. Right. So those are reasonable conditions, exactly what you do with site plan approvals. Okay. They will be approved, but we get to talk about the conditions. Okay. Okay. Any more questions for Wayne? Did we hit all of them? So. <coughs> Assisted care, junk cars, community centers, setbacks for TV. That's it. Those are the big ones. Well, and there are the there are different setbacks for the different two uh, codes. Right. Right. Okay. And then um, just one thing I want to go over. So we had with one concern. This is actually a zoning ordinance we've had in the books for 40 years, but one concern it's never been clear. So just to, to clear up. So. We have minimum lot size in both suburban residential and rural residential, 30,000, 40,000 square feet. And if you have on-site water and on-site sewer, it goes to 80,000 square feet. We just had a call from someone who said, what if you only have one on-site? We thought having you know, the and made it clear, but we're just suggesting adding the word both. So there's no question in people's okay. mind. Um, and so you see that in, in the version that you got. That's why those red lines are there. That's changed since the original draft. Okay, and so the purpose of these is when you go to the planning board zoning page, this these two will now pop up along with the ones we did for URA, mm -hmm. URB, and URC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Any other thoughts? So you need a recommendation. Well, public here if anyone wants to testify. Oh, we have public. I didn't see that. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so I need a motion to close public hearing. It's not open. No. Give people a chance to testify if they want to say Oh. Uh, so we, oh, okay. hadn't, uh, we hadn't opened it. We won't close it. Um, so do I hear a motion? Motion to close public hearing. No, I would, we didn't. I didn't you actually did. technically open. You, you did. Oh, I did? You okay. Did. Yeah. Second. Your altar, you go to. <laughs> Some nights are better Someone's than others. Second. Test. All in favor? Close public hearing. Any more discussion? Can I get a motion? Thanks, Tess. Motion to approve recommendations to zoning changes in SR and RR districts. Um. Second. Second. From Ann. All in favor? All right. Unanimous. Um, we are in the position of continuation of the hearing that we did not open for uh, 
energy positive homes. I have that dated back to August. Um, it asked to continue to October 22nd. Okay. We didn't know. We have to continue a meeting. We have it over. Because uh, we have to re advertise it. Right. As long as you open it in a public yeah. hearing, we don't have to re. Right. Okay. So it should be someone should make a motion to continue it to 7 30 on Thursday, October 22nd, City Council Chambers. And made the motion. John seconded it. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, that's the agenda items. Uh, Carolyn sent out the minutes for uh, 9 10, yep. which she put in the subject line nine to ten minutes and I yes. thought that's how long it would take me to read it <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> except for a, a couple of punctuations I I thought they read fine does anyone have any corrections or changes to those minutes I move I, to uh, approve the minutes of September 10th mover by Mark second. second by Bill all in favor thank you sure so you will probably got more email from me than you care. Um, but I just want to do one more plug and, and give you some more context for this. So this is um, you know, when we did an assessment of sustainable Northampton. Um, we want the original plan was to start revising sustainable Northampton next year. We now actually have a we've had a lot of money we've discovered. And so we're doing a fair number of detailed studies. We're doing a climate adaptation plan right now, which we felt was the biggest weakness in Santa Northampton. And we just got $70,000 in funding for a comprehensive pedestrian plan. So we want to do that as well. Comprehensive what? Pedestrian plan. So we're searching for a little bit of money so we can make it pedestrian and bicycle plan. So we may actually put off the Santa Northampton, do these elements, which will make the plan itself much easier going forward. So. This one, I know you've heard this before, but so we have a, a national team coming in on um, Monday through Wednesday, uh, eight people from around the country, two staff people, six volunteers, to sort of head off the process. They're not writing a client adaptation plan, but they're helping us figure out the framework for the plan. So it's a three-day intense process. It works as it gets people interested in doing it. And I obviously love you guys to participate as much in the process as possible. So. Three opportunities if you're interested, and obviously love all three. We're doing focus groups on Monday afternoon. So these are small 10 to 12 person focus groups, one on energy, one on climate environmental planning, um, and one on urban design and green infrastructure. And so if you're interested in that, we definitely have space, but I need to know because we have limited space, I need RSVP. Then seven o'clock on Monday is sort of a broader community input. Um, and then seven o'clock on Wednesday is the team reporting out, um, and it's it's always stunned me how much they work they can do in three days. So they should all be fun. But um, so so come to them all. You don't have to let me know except for the Monday afternoon if you want to do that, either today before you leave or by email. Let me know. And I assume those are up in City Hall, and the other two at the at the senior center. That's right. So the, yeah. the evening ones at the senior center, <coughs> the, the workshops. We have a few spaces in City Hall in this building, and we're assigned the first floor. that will say which one you signed up for, and what space to go to. Okay. And we can post these publicly. That'd be great. Throughout town. Okay. All you want. <laughs> I think three is enough. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. great. I'm curious how we found money, but I'm also curious how you set the topics in priority. So the climate adaptation, so we did, remember we did a presentation before you guys about the Star Communities Program, yeah. which was the sort of the assessment of how sustainable we are. And so we've looked at that not only to brag about what a great city we are, but that really wasn't the primary purpose. It was to look at what are things we're not doing as well as some of our peers. And the climate adaptation stood out really in a world to itself. It was the one thing we weren't doing. Okay. And, and we do a lot on climate adaptation. Um, but we don't really have a framework. So, you know, you guys approved a few months ago requiring street trees be, the, be street trees that could thrive in Northampton today and trees that could thrive in Washington, D.C. today. So we're ready if it gets warmer over here. Um, and, the, you know, health departments working hard in finding heat shelters. So we do, a, you know, and central services working hard on creating a microgrid that could survive power failures that include Cooley Dickinson Hospital and DPW. And so we have a lot of these overall pieces, but they really rely, frankly, on good department heads, a good mayor and good city council that sort of say, oh, we should do this, we should do that, as opposed to having a comprehensive framework, which we have for most everything else we do. Yeah. So that's where that one came from. The 
the Estrian plan has really been talked about for a long time. Transportation parking is clearly that, that whole crosswalk study that, that you initiated, I think, has been part of it. A lot of interest in doing it. We have a master plan right now for bicycle trails that's part of our open space plan, but not for on street parking, uh, not for on street roads. We're doing this work on Pleasant Street. We've applied for a million and a half dollars. We may or may not get it. And when we had that public hearing, it was really clear people were interested in cycle tracks, which is something we don't have anywhere. And again, we don't really have a framework. So it just it seemed like this big gap. In our, in our Speaking of Pleasant Street, the, the roundabout, when is that work? So they've hired a contractor. Contractor could, in theory, start whenever they want. As a practical matter, they're not going to do, you know, they have to get their, their SWIPs they have to yep. mobilize. I don't think you're going to see much before next spring. Okay. They might do, you know, there might be some demolition, there might be something. It, it's really up to them, and I haven't seen the timeline. Okay. Um, usually, and again, I don't know this contract, usually have two years. <clears throat> but last I heard, they think they would do, reach substantial completion in 2016. There might be some things mm -hmm. that don't happen to 2017. Right. So if that they start in the spring, they'll be wrapping up by the end of the year. Substantially, right, right, right. Okay. Any more questions while we got him? No. Motion. Forty minute meeting plus swag. Well done, Wayne. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> John, move we adjourn. Like Test seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye.